Okay, in this uh, live stream demonstration, I'm going to show you how to model this uh, bicycle wheel that you see here. Okay, so before you start to model a bicycle wheel, the first thing you need to get are references. So the best references I found online is this image from this website okay, by, uh, it's called patricktaylor.com, building a bicycle wheel. And in my Google search, you just search for the term bicycle wheel lacing, and you should be able to find a bunch of uh, very good references. And one of the references that I found is from this website. And the image that I downloaded is an image showing how the bicycle spokes are being laced. Right, so using this image as a reference, I'm going to bring it into Blender and show you step by step how to actually build it. So first, I'm going to start a new scene and show you the entire steps and process. The first step is to create a empty image empty. All right, so once you created the image empty, go to the properties of the image empty and change the offset to minus 0.5 in the X and Y axis and increase the size of the image reference until it fills the entire grid. Now, once you've downloaded the reference image, okay, whether you place it on your desktop or in the image location, you just go, just go ahead and open it. Now, in this case, I placed it on my desktop so I can find it quickly. So this is the image reference that I found. Now, for this particular bicycle wheel, I noticed that there are nine blue spokes and nine purple spokes on one side. So altogether, there are 18 spokes on one side and 18 spokes on the other side. So total, there are 36 spokes on this bicycle wheel. So if we take a look at this image, we're gonna concentrate on how to model these nine blue spokes. So the first thing we need to do is to create the spoke. So I'm going to select the, uh, the empty, the image empty, I'm gonna push it down and I'm going to the outliner over here, empty, and I'm going to click on the selection icon so to disable it from being selected and moved, All right? So if I press number seven on my number pad and press five to go to the uh, orthographic view, you notice that now the image reference is opaque. I want to adjust the transparency until I can see the grids. Okay, I don't need the image to be opaque. So now, I can start to build my first spoke, right? So I'm going to switch back to my orthographic, orthographic view. I'm going to press Shift A, go to Mesh, and create a cylinder. Now, I do not need so many sides for a spoke, so I'm going to reduce the number to just eight spokes. On the lower left corner, on the Tools panels here, just enter the number of vertices and reduce it to eight, eight sides, okay? And I'm going to reduce the radius until it's very narrow or until to the thickness of the reference you see here, okay? So the next thing I want to do is I want to shift the center pivot down to the bottom of this cylinder. So to do that quickly, I'm going to change the front view, press tab to go to edit mode and when you press tab to go edit mode, all the vertices are selected. Grab the transform manipulator and just move until all the vertices are lined up with the pivot or the origin at the bottom. Now, to be more precise, you can press A to deselect. I'm going to turn on this um, clip with that buffer button here to turn it on so that I can select the vertices behind. Okay, just want to confirm that all the vertices are selected. Okay, so remember to turn on this button so you can select the vertices behind. And I'm going to move it down until it lines up with this red line. So you can turn on snap to grid and then just move it down until it lines up with the bottom. So now I can disable the snap. Okay, so now I have the pivot lined up at the bottom. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. So press R, followed by Y in this case, and then press 90. So now I rotated it 90 degrees. 
I'm going, to I'm going to press 7 to go to the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a sort of like a rivet, rivet head from this spoke so that I can poke it up from this side. I'm going to start to model the, uh, the spoke with the rivet side poking out. Okay, I'm using this uh, purple spoke as a reference. So going to the side view again, okay, you can just press 1 to go to the front view. Or you can press number number three, depending on where you rotated your uh, spoke. So I'm going to move the spoke further ahead here. Press tab to go to edit mode. And then I'm going to extrude this area 90 degrees so that it uh, this group of vertices will spin outwards. So I'm going to use a spin function. So before I do that, I'm zooming in a little bit. I'm going to put the cursor right about here to act as the pivot point. That's how the uh, spin function works. Now, you need to select the vertices at the end here. So I'm going to press A to deselect and B and box select. Now, by doing that, you just ensure that you only select these group of vertices. Now, press this command, alternate R, ALT key plus R, and you notice that it will rotate or spin a group of vertices all the way up 90 degrees. Now, we do not need so many segments here. If you look at the lower left-hand corner of the tools panel, you can adjust the steps to reduce it. Okay, I'm going to reduce it to about four steps because we really do not need all this extra detail for a single spoke. Now, with the vertices still selected, now, I'm going to change my view a little bit. With all these vertices selected, it's assuming that this face is selected. So what we're going to do is going to extrude this face to form the rivet head. So I'm going to press 1 again in my number pad to go to my front view again. Press E to extrude one section. Press E again to extrude a further section. All right. And then I'm going to extrude just another smaller section. Okay, You might skip extruding another section here. So if you don't need, I realize I don't really need this edge loop. Okay, I'm going to hold down to Alt, right mouse click to select this edge loop. And then I'm going to press X and then dissolve away the uh, edges. Okay, and then I'm going to extrude these faces outwards so that it forms a rivet head. So I'm going to switch to face selection mode by pressing Control Tab, select face, holding down to Alt key, Alt, right mouse click and select the face, and press E again to extrude. Okay, however, I'm going to right mouse click so the extruded faces snap back. Then I'm going to use the shrink flatten function, which is Alt S to extrude out the rivet head. So I've completed the rivet head and I created this uh, very simple looking spoke. Okay, so I'm going to start off with this spoke and I'm going to line it up until it matches the position of uh, one of these uh, purple purple spokes, okay? So I'm going to select the spoke and then I'm going to press G and then move it over here, all right? The next thing is we want to create a multiple copy of this spoke around the uh, bicycle hub, okay? So we will have to change the pivot point of this uh, spoke right to the center. So how do we do that? So first, we are going to go to wireframe mode by pressing Z so that we can see through. And uh, we are going to press Shift C so that the cursor comes back to the origin position. Now, we want the origin point of this spoke to jump to the position of the cursor. So to do that, you go ahead to the Tools panel here and click on Set Origin and choose Origin to 3D Cursor. So right now, when I press rotate, it's going to rotate along its new center. And we are going to use a modifier called the array modifier to create another eight spokes that goes around here. But we can, cannot just simply use array modifier alone. We have to create another empty to act as the offset handle. So press Shift A and create a empty just a plain axis and uh, empty. Okay, we're going to use this empty to duplicate more of these spokes. So select the single spoke 
I'm going, go, I'm going to go back to the top view again. Select that single spoke, go over to the Add Modifier panel, and add a array modifier. Go ahead and uncheck Relative Offset. Increase the number count to eight, because total there are nine. So we're going to create a duplicate of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, and enable in your array modifier object offset. You can use the picker and pick the empty. All right, and you'll notice that right now, if I were to rotate and move the the empty, the orientation of the spoke is not moving the way that I want. Okay, because I forgot to do one more step for the spoke. So I'm going to going back to the spoke again, and I'm going to uncheck object offset. I'm going to select the spoke and then I'm going to apply this operation, control A. Okay, I'm going to apply the rotation and the scale. Okay, this operation is very similar, similar to another software called Maya called the freeze transformations. So what I did there was to freeze or reset the rotation and scale of the spoke so that is uh so the rotation values and the scale values change back to zero and one. So that's what the control A function does. All right, pressing M to hide the uh, fuel pot properties. Now I'm going to try the offset again. Select the spoke, go to the modifier under the array modifier and enable the object offset again. And this time you see nothing happens. That is because you need to select the empty, all right, and rotate. And now you see, as I rotate, you notice that the duplicates will start to rotate around the empty. And because we need to create how many uh, additional spokes? Okay, let's see. I'm going to rotate until the spokes are evenly spaced out. So we are actually short of one more. We have to create a total of nine spokes. So total one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. So you have to change the value into nine because I think the number also includes the original uh, spoke itself. So I'm going to rotate a little bit more okay, until the spokes are approximately in the right position. Okay, but you notice something. The spokes, right? The orientation of the spokes are not matching the purple spokes the position right now is correct but now i need to change the orientation of the spoke so select the original spoke and go ahead and press tab to go to edit mode now we need to move the cursor to this location now you notice that the original faces are still being selected and you can see the common center is here i want to move my cursor to this location because i'm going to use this location as a rotation point so press shift s and choose cursor to select it. So now the cursor is in the correct location that I want. Now press A a couple of times to deselect and select all the faces or vertices and go down to the pivot point and choose 3D cursor. Now, whatever you rotate will be followed along the 3D cursor. So press R to rotate. Make sure you're in the top orthographic view while, doing, while you're doing this. Rotate until the orientation of your spoke is now lined up with the purple reference. All right. So once you have done that, we are going to duplicate this and re and create the blue spokes. Okay. However, if you notice the blue spokes, the the rivet head is actually pointing downwards. Okay. Let me just press tab to go to object mode again and press Z to go to shaded mode. So let me just change my point of view. Okay, so this is what I mean. The rivet heads are now pointing upwards. So we need to create another set of these spokes where the rivet head is pointing downwards. Now, in order to duplicate another set, we have to select both the, the empty and the array and go ahead. Okay, before I do that, I'm going to change back my center to back to median point. I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate. Okay, should be to duplicate another set here. All right. So let me just undo again and demonstrate. So select the spokes, the array spokes, and shift select the empty. Press shift B, and then you can press Z. So you lock it in the Z location. 
and then left mouse click to put it in place. Now, you notice the duplicates rivet heads are now pointing upwards. We want the rivet heads to be pointing downwards. We're going to use a mirror command, Control M. If you press Control M and if you look down at the bottom of the, your viewport, it says, which axis do you want to set? Whether you want to set it as X, Y, or Z. So in this case, we want to flip it in the negative Z axis. So you just press Z. So after pressing Control M, you just press Z. So now I have flipped the duplicates and I can move them down. Okay, and if you go to the top view, you notice that, of course, the spokes are cutting into one another. So while the new set is selected, you can press R to rotate. Okay, and then rotate them to the blue spokes uh, position. Okay. So now you can see they are evenly spaced out. But you notice they, uh, the spokes are not really lined up with the blue spokes position. So you can do the same operation again. Press tab. Okay, select the, uh, just choose one of the blue spokes and press tab to select uh, the the spoke and we're going to change the cursor position right into this location again so we're going to loop select this ring of faces okay, so now you can see the center position is now selected for this spoke then press shift s and choose cursor to select it now press a a couple of times so that the entire spoke is selected this time reactivating the 3d cursor uh, pivot point Okay, with all the faces selected, now just simply press R and rotate until the spokes are lined up with the blue spokes. Okay. All right, so now we need to extend the length of the spokes until it matches the diameter of the reference. So that is just a simple matter of going back to edit mode, control tab and go to vertex mode, press A to deselect, Press B and select the N vertices. Okay, I'm going to switch back to median point. All right, so that I can press G to move all the N vertices until you reach to the end point here. All right, I'm going to just go beyond the uh, bicycle uh, rim at this point. And also go to the side view and push the vertices down so that they actually go downwards a little bit. We're going to do the same for the other uh, spoke set. Okay, so go back to the top view again. Now we're going to do that to the the purple purple spokes. Okay, now before we do that, we're going to we're going to the side. We are going to go to the side view and we are going to select the original uh, Okay, we're going to select the original MT plus the array. Make sure you select both of them together. Otherwise, if you move one of them, you might uh, distort the array. So you have to move them up until the, the spokes are actually intertwined with each other. All right. Now, you do not want the spokes to cut into one another. So you try to move it in such a way so that now the rivet heads, okay, the rivet head center are, have an empty space here. This is where we're going to put the bicycle hub later on. Okay, so once you have done that, then we can modify the purple spokes. So I'm going to press tab to go to edit mode. And the same thing, go to the top and choose the end point vertices. Press A to deselect. Press B and select the vertices at the end. Press G and then move the vertices until it went beyond the, the rim. Okay, and then switch back to the side view or front view and pull down the vertices until they line up, until the ends lined up with the blue spokes that we created earlier on. Now, to avoid confusion, I'm going to assign a material right now. So these are the purple spokes. So I'm just going to assign a purplish color to them for now. And then for these guys, I'm going to assign a blue color. So we know that they are the blue spokes and they are the purple spokes. 
Okay. So now we created our first spoke set. Now, how do we create the other set, which is which are the pink and the red set? So now that we have these two sets, we can apply the array so that they become permanent. Okay, because right now, this is just a duplicate using the array modifier of uh, the original spoke. So I'm going to go to the modifier for this uh, blue spoke and I'm going to apply. Okay, I'm going to right mouse click and select the purple spokes and I'm going to apply it as well. So now they are permanent. I can delete away the uh, empties because I don't need them now. And I can simply create another set by selecting both of them at the same time and press Shift B to duplicate and then move the duplicate down and using the Control M mirror function, Control M, and then press Z to flip them. So while they're still being selected, press Z to go to the top view, then press R to rotate until it aligns with the reference from the other side. Okay, so now let's go to the front view again. And you want to move the new set of spokes until again their tips lined up with the rest of the spokes or the original two sets of spokes. Okay. So now, in order to make them uh, much more easier to discern, I'm going to use the same color coding again. So this, or a different color coding. So these are, this one is the red one. I'm going to create a new red material. And then the other one is the pink color material, which is the bottom one. So I'm going to change it to single user and then change this one to a pink color. All right. So we have now our spokes nicely created. So let's create the bicycle hub. Okay, the bicycle hub is just simply a cylinder. Right. So I'm going to let's select uh, both the, in fact, let's select all the bicycle spokes by pressing B box select and then drag and select all the bicycle spokes, and then I'm going to join all of them together. In fact, let me see whether I can select them in the outliner. Okay, and then I'm going to press the command, Control J, so that they become a single object. Okay, now they have become a single object. And then I'm going to press this uh, set origin, origin to geometry. So right now it is at the center. Then I'm going to press Shift S and say cursor to the center. So now, Whatever I create, whatever mesh I create will appear at the center. So I'm going to save this file. It's also, it's always a good idea to save your file as you're working. So now I've saved the file, I'm going to press Shift A, and then I'm going to create a cylinder. Now, since this cylinder is, uh, I mean, this bicycle wheel has 36 spokes on one side, I'm going to create a 36, 36 side uh, cylinder. Okay, and then I'm going to increase the radius. And I'm going to reduce the depth until, because it's right at the center, I can increase and reduce the depth until it touches the edge of the rivet head. Okay, and the diameter, I'm going to increase it until it encompasses all the vertices, like so. Okay, the one over here, I will need to adjust again, but okay, now I will need to use my Insert Edge Loop tool, Control R. Oh, before I do that, I need to go to Edit Mode first. Press Tab to go to Edit Mode, Control R. Give a couple of edge loops and insert the edge loop then press s followed by z to scale it up until we reach just about here the edge loop just about here and then i'm going to ins insert another couple of more edge loops Control r two more edge loops and then i'm going to scale it along the z axis maybe very very close here now while the edge loops is still being selected i'm going to press s followed by Shift-Z to narrow down 
the bicycle hub okay so that now i can create this nice uh bicycle wheel hub with all the spokes nicely attached right so if you want to make the uh wheel hub look a little bit nicer what you can do is you can select the top and bottom face of the hub top and bottom face of the hub press e to extrude okay and right mouse click so that the extruded face snaps back to the original location press s followed by shift z so that you can scale it inwards like so i'm gonna press e again to extrude and then press s again to snap back the extruded face press s followed by z to scale it inwards i'm gonna press s again followed by shift z to just give it a little bit of taper this is just a slight decoration i'm just adding to it okay i need to press s and then followed by z and then push it up slightly maybe okay just to create this uh look all right i think i've made a mistake there let me just undo okay so i think i've undo in object mode so i lost everything so anyway it doesn't matter i can still uh, recreate the hub again so shift a and create a cylinder and we still have the 36 value but this time i'm going to do it a little bit differently i'm going to just make it narrower i'm going to start narrow first okay and and i'm going to increase the height until it overshots let me just go to the front view i'm going to adjust the depth until the this edge lines up with the vertice here then i'm going to go to edit mode Control r insert a couple of edge loops left mouse click to plant the edge loops press s to go to scale mode press z to scale along the z-axis until you reach about here we want this edge loop to line up with the ends of the blue rivet head here and then i'm going to switch over to face selection mode holding down to alt key right mouse click to select this face loop shift alt right mouse click and select this face loop press e to extrude right mouse click to let the extruded face snap back and then press alt s to increase the diameter of the hub so very quickly i've created or i recreated the uh, wheel hub again now do i want to re redecorate this again uh, we might as well so just go and select the two faces here i'm going to press e to extrude right mouse click to let it snap back into place and perhaps uh, press s followed by z let it scale upwards and then maybe press s followed by shift z to non-uniform scale it in okay this is just me wanting it to look a little bit nicer Okay, so far we created the wheel lying on its side. So I'm going to select all these objects at the same time. And then I'm going to press R followed by Y and then 9, 0. Okay, so I'm kind of more used to creating my bicycle wheels like this. Now, how do we create the bicycle rim? Now, we're going to take a shortcut. We're going to reuse the mesh. We're going to duplicate the face loop that runs around this wheel hub. And we're going to use it to create the bicycle rim. So how do, how do we do that? You just press tab to go to edit mode, holding down to alt and right mouse click along the face loop. Press shift D to duplicate. So when you move your cursor, the data faces will follow it. But right mouse click so that it snaps back into, loca into the same location. Use the alt S, alt S to string flatten okay the string flatten function mode to expand the faces outwards okay while the faces are still being selected press s followed by x to shrink it down now if you want the rim to be a separate object you press p followed by clicking the selection so now so now it becomes a separate object so how do we create this uh the v shape where it holds the wheel go to edit mode select the uh rim we're gonna press a to deselect first Select the rim, press tab to go to edit mode, hold down, hold down to your alt key, alt right mouse click, and make sure you're in edge selection mode, alt right mouse click along the edge, shift alt, select the other edge on the other side, press E, E to extrude, okay, and then press S to 
expand outwards. And then now you can press S again, but this time along the X axis so they can give it a taper. So now we have created the rim. Now I want the normals to face outwards. Okay, the normals of the this rim now looks a bit odd. So go to edit mode, select all the faces by pressing A, and then press W and choose flip normals. Okay, so now, now the normals are looking normal. All right, so we have created the bicycle wheel with the rim. We can apply a smooth, but you notice that the smooth, right, uh, sort of removed the hard edge along this corner here. So go to edit mode by pressing tab, select the edge that runs around here. Hold on to alt, right mouse click, shift alt, right mouse click to select the running edges or the edge loops around here. Press W and apply a bevel. Okay, then depending on how much of the bevel you want, you pull out and give, now you have a nice bevel. And if you look at the lower left-hand corner in the tools panel, you can increase the number of segments. So I'm going to give it a couple of segments. So now if I jump back to object mode again, and now we have a much nicer looking edge. And finally, for the wheel or for the tire, we're just going to use, we're going, just going to use a torus. Okay, so I'm going to snap the cursor to this location by pressing Shift S cursor to select it so that the torus will appear right over here. Shift A, go to mesh and create a torus. And go right ahead and increase the diameter under the torus here. The radius, increase the major radius until it cuts into the rim. And then also increase the minor radius just so that you inflate the tire a little bit. Okay, you could have done this while the, the the wheel is lying on its side to probably get a much more accurate dimension. So once you have done that, okay, you can rotate the wheel, press R followed by Y, and then press 90, 90 degrees. I'm gonna give the wheel a different color so I can tell it apart, so give it a dark color. And I think it kind of fits. So if it doesn't fit, you can just use scale to just scale it up slightly, okay? And if your wheel, your rim is too wide, you can just go and scale it along the x-axis so that the sides will hug the wheel. Now, I all I need to do is just smooth this tire and basically your bicycle wheel is done. So you can choose to combine all the pieces together or group them together and then you are ready to render it. Okay, so I'm going to select all of them at the same time and then I'm just going to try to scale them down and increase all the rotation and scale. I'll reset the rotation and scale. I'm going to create a floor plane. Okay, let me undo. I'm going to press Shift C to bring the cursor back to the origin and Shift A create a plane to act as a ground surface. Scaling it up by pressing S. And I'm going to select my tire, bicycle tire, just bring it up slightly. And we select and bring it up slightly. I just want to, I'm just curious to see what it will look like rendered. So I'm going to enable Cycles Renderer and then I'm going to turn on Rendered Look and see what it looks like. Okay, doesn't look too bad, right? Okay, let me go back to wireframe. I'm going to select the light, use nodes, change the color to slightly yellow, just bump the value to 1000 and then render again. So it doesn't look too bad. So this is the result. Okay, of course, you can adjust your materials until your bicycle wheel look a little bit nicer. Okay, so thanks for joining me for the very first uh, live stream uh, tutorial demo. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and hope that uh, the information here will help you to model a bicycle wheel. So I'm going to end the uh, broadcast session now. And thank you all for all watching. And goodbye and see you all again.